If you'd like to take your time blending without having to worry about the paint drying, Golden Open Acrylics may be what you're looking for. Open Acrylics are a slow drying acrylic. They contain retarder so they will stay wet for a longer period of time than regular acrylics. How long these paints will remain wet depends upon your environment. If you live in a very hot and dry environment, they will dry faster than if you live in a humid location. I was able to blend these colors at a slow pace without having them dry up while I'm blending them. In fact, the colors were still wet on the palette paper two hours later. This is impressive because I was working indoors during the winter when the air is drier than normal. The thick blobs of paint on your palette will stay wet for a longer period of time because of the thickness. Thin layers of paint on the canvas will dry faster. The colors that I'm using are Thalo Blue and Quinacridone Magenta. These colors are fairly dark when you use them straight from the tube, so I added titanium white to lighten them. I begin by brushing on the Thalo Blue at the top of the board and work my way down. I mix in a bit of the magenta to the blue as I progress. To blend the color, I move the brush from side to side. It may be necessary to brush over it a few times to blend out the streaks and hard edges that may develop. When I reach the middle of the board, I wash out my brush and start painting with the pure magenta. It's necessary to wash the brush so the thalo blue doesn't contaminate the pure magenta at the bottom. I start from the bottom of the panel and work my way up to the purple in the middle. When I reach the purple, I blend the edges to create a smooth transition. A few notes about open acrylics. You can dilute the paint with water, but open thinner is more effective at keeping the paint wet. It will thin the paint while retaining the slow drying properties. If you feel as though they take too long to dry, you can mix them with regular acrylics. The more regular acrylic paint that you add, the faster they'll dry. You can also use a hair dryer to make the paint dry faster. Golden recommends waiting at least two weeks before applying varnish. You also want to avoid applying open acrylics in layers thicker than a sixteenth of an inch. Thicker layers may remain tacky or take a very long time to dry. If you like to paint in thick layers, you should probably use regular heavy body acrylics. Interactive acrylics are similar to regular fast drying acrylics, but the difference is you can re-wet them by misting them with water. This works even if it starts to dry to the touch. When you allow the paint to dry overnight, misting it with water may not reactivate it. In that case, you can use the unlocking formula to make it workable again. If you happen to let it dry for an extended period of time, it will begin to cure and you won't be able to reactivate it. These paints blend well and the ability to reactivate them takes the pressure off. You can take your time and blend the colors at a leisurely pace. If you don't want the unlocking formula to lift the previous layers, you can seal the painting with fast medium fixer or their universal medium and then let it dry. Some artists use this technique to seal the painting once it gets to the stage that they like, then they can experiment on top of it. If they don't like how it looks, they can use the unlocking formula to remove the new layer. In this demo, I'm using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue which will blend to a neutral black. I begin by brushing on the burnt sienna along the top and I slowly introduce more of the ultramarine blue as I work my way down the canvas board. When I notice that the paint is starting to get tacky, I can mist it with water and keep on blending. These paints are creamy and blend well. They are a good option for artists who want smooth blends but don't like the extended drying times of open acrylics. One method that many artists overlook is to use acrylics in a manner similar to watercolors. While you can thin out heavy body paints, it's best to use an acrylic paint with a thin consistency. There are a number of thin acrylics available. Fluid acrylics are available from Golden and Liquitex offers a line of soft body acrylics. If you're looking for an acrylic paint that has an ink-like consistency, you can try Liquitex acrylic inks or Golden High Flow acrylics. There are other brands that offer acrylics with a thin consistency. In this example, I use Hansa Yellow and Thalo Green fluid acrylics. After I squeeze the colors out on my palette, I thin them with a little bit of water. Once they're diluted with water, you can apply them like watercolors. You can use acrylic inks straight from the tube for more intense colors. The canvas board gave me some difficulty with applying washes. It's rather smooth and it must have had some sort of coating on it that repels water. Scrubbing it with the brush will help to accept the water, but I think watercolor paper would be a better surface to paint on. I use a hair dryer to dry the paint. 
If the first layer isn't as dark as you want, you can apply a second wash over the top of it. There's an uncontrollable element to watercolor painting techniques. That's both the fun and the frustration of watercolors. Some acrylic inks tend to lift if you paint over them too vigorously, especially if they haven't had a chance to completely cure. Therefore, you want to be careful not to lift the previous layers. I used multiple washes of color to build up the saturation that I was looking for. If you use an acrylic ink, you may be able to achieve that in one layer because you won't have to dilute them with water. You may want to try experimenting with this acrylic watercolor technique on paper. In this example, I begin by painting the entire canvas solid yellow. I give it two coats so that I have a solid yellow base to work on top of. I use a hairdryer to force the paint to dry faster between coats. When the yellow is dry, I mix naphthol red light with glazing medium to increase the transparency. I start at the bottom with the red. As I work my way up the canvas board, I add more glazing medium to make the color more transparent. You can apply another glaze on top after the first layer dries. You don't want to disturb the paint if it's still tacky, because you might pull up some of the existing layers. Many artists complain that acrylics dry too fast, but I often use a hairdryer to make them dry even faster. The red glazes create a fairly smooth gradient. It does contain some subtle streaks, but I don't mind it. If it's a problem, you can try using different brushes or a smoother surface. Creating that many glazes with oils would take a long time because of how long they take to dry. One approach to working with acrylics is to learn how to work fast. It also helps to apply the paint in a slightly thicker layer so that it doesn't dry too quickly. The rate at which acrylic paint dries depends upon the thickness. If you apply a slightly thicker layer than normal, it will extend the drying time. This strategy works best for blending small areas of color. The paint may begin to dry if you try to blend a very large area. The colors I'm using here are ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. I use the same strategy of starting from the top of the ultramarine blue and adding the second color as I work down the board. There's really no secret to this. If you can keep the paint wet, then you can just keep blending and working your way through the gradient until it's smooth. Out of all these examples, this may be the smoothest blend. This technique works well for situations like this where it's just horizontal blending across the entire canvas. Blending becomes more difficult when you blend two colors together in a smaller, irregular shape. This is just something you have to practice. Some artists like to apply both colors and then use a second clean brush to blend the transition area. A soft brush usually works well for this, but it will only work if the paint isn't starting to tack up. One way to extend the blending time is to mist the paint with water before it dries. If you're working on an area of your painting and the paint begins to dry, you can mist it with water from a spray bottle. Buy a couple of different bottles and then try them out. You want one that has a fine and uniform spray. Some of them will spit large droplets of water onto your canvas, which may leave a mark. If you hold the bottle further away from the canvas, the larger droplets should fall to the floor instead of onto the canvas. Sometimes the droplets will leave a pattern on the wet paint. There's not much you can do about this. If you still have the same color on your brush, you can try to smooth it out. Other times the pattern disappears as the drops of water evaporate. You can also use the spray bottle to keep the paints wet on your palette, although a stay wet palette works well too. I prefer the small spray bottles as they produce a fine spray. The larger spray bottles found at hardware stores are made for cleaning solutions or for spraying plants. They usually produce a spray that's too powerful. In this example, I'm blending Liquitex soft body acrylics. The colors are cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, and light green permanent. Dry brushing works best with a thick paint and a stiff brush. In this example, I'm using Liquitex heavy body acrylics. Soft hair brushes don't move the thick paint around as well as brushes with stiffer bristles. You can also use dry brushing to create smooth transitions of color, and it doesn't matter that the paint dries quickly. The colors that I'm using are cobalt blue hue and burnt sienna. I mix both of these colors with white to make them more opaque. Make sure to dry the brush off before dipping it into the paint because any extra water will interfere with this blending technique. There's a reason why they call it dry brushing. Heavy body acrylics Work well with this technique because you want a thick paint that you can scrub onto the canvas. While I'm working, I occasionally dab the paint onto a paper towel to remove some of the extra paint. I start at the bottom and scrub the paint onto the canvas board. As I make my way up the canvas, I begin to introduce the burnt sienna. After the first layer dries, I can see some of the white canvas showing through. 
Since dry brushing applies a thin layer of paint, you may have to do two layers to get good coverage. The two colors neutralize each other where they meet in the middle. I apply a second coat and it produces a rather smooth gradient. This is a technique that's technically blending without blending, if that makes any sense. You don't attempt to soften the edges or blend the paint at all. You can create a blending effect by placing similar colors next to each other. This is similar to the posterization effect that illustrators use. It's not the best technique for painting flawless skies or water reflections, but a lot of the blending in paintings happens in the small areas, and this actually works fairly well. This painting of sunflowers looks like it contains a lot of smooth blending. However, if you look at the detail of the stems, you'll notice that there are hard edges between the colors. Those greens don't contain any blending at all. The stems consist of similar colors that are placed next to each other without using any blending. I did use blending in the areas of the painting, but it's surprising how placing the right colors next to each other will create the illusion of a smooth gradient. In this demo, the hard edges and banding are obvious because the difference in the value between the yellow and red is too great. The stems of the sunflower are similar shades of green, so the effect is more subtle. The colors I'm using here are cadmium red medium and cadmium yellow medium. The soft body paint is thinner than regular acrylic, so it's easy to brush on. I begin by mixing about six versions of orange from red to yellow on the palette paper. I apply the paint to the canvas as solid stripes. I start with the solid stripe of yellow at the bottom. Then I clean my brush and pick up the next color on my palette and paint it right next to the first color. I don't try to soften the edges or blend it into the next color. I just apply each color as a stripe. After I apply three of the orange colors, I start to apply the red from the top down. I had to figure out how wide each band should be so there's enough room for all of the colors on the canvas. The final result is something that contains a lot of obvious banding. If there were more steps of color in between, the edges would be less obvious, similar to my painting of sunflowers. Most subjects are made up of solid patches of color. If you match those colors and place them in the right location, it will create the illusion that they are all blended together. Acrylics dry quickly and it's easy to create hard edge brush strokes with them, so why not turn that into an advantage? The fact that the paint dries quickly means that you can create numerous layers of color in a rapid manner. Another blending option is to allow the brush strokes to show. In this painting, I didn't spend much time trying to blend the colors together. I simply mix each color and apply it without fussing with it too much. I had plenty of orange and red paint left over from the previous example, so I used the same colors again for this demonstration. As in the other examples, I worked my way from the bottom of the canvas board to the top. The difference is I don't try to create a totally smooth gradient. I just allow the brush marks to show. There are many different ways that you can apply the paint with the brush. You can experiment with applying the paint in different ways to see what the results are. Try using different brush sizes and different types of bristles. Another thing that you should consider is the thickness of the paint. Many impressionistic painters use thick paint. In this stage, I have all of the colors on the canvas. I can leave it this way, but I spent some extra time applying more paint and experimenting with brushing the paint on in different ways. Here is the final result. While I can see the brush strokes, it still creates a pleasing blending effect.